Good day, and welcome back to Gemma Movie Recap. In today's video, we'll watch Mosul, a war action film. There will be a few spoilers. The film begins with the exposition that the war between ISIS, also known as Daesh in the region, and Iraq is coming to an end. Major Jassim's Nineveh SWAT team is the only unit that fights them every day, without rest or retreat. And, even before the terrorist group leaves, the Nineveh SWAT team embarks on a final mission. Then we see three police officers being pinned to the ground in a gunfight with the terrorists. Kawa, one of the cops, attends to his injured uncle while his colleague Jamil fights the intruders. Two police officers are running out of ammunition when the Nineveh SWAT team arrives to rescue them. The major in charge of the team, Jassim, asks them why they are in the city and they explain that they are making an arrest. Jassim checks to see if they are on a list of enemies and, upon finding that they are not, asks if they or their families have been harmed by Daesh. One of the officers, Kawa, mentions that the other officer who died was his uncle. Jassim offers Kawa the opportunity to join the SWAT team and, after some hesitation, Kawa accepts and is given a SWAT cap. Jamil then informs him that he will be taking Kawa's uncle. Then, Major Jassim instructed Jamil to leave the area. Kawa kisses his late uncle goodbye before they depart. Kawa asks one of the SWAT members, Walid, what their mission is while on the move, but Walid does not directly answer his question. Following that, they enter a building and clear it to rest, but due to the smell of the dead body, they transfer to the second floor, where they discovered a room with a working television. When Major Jassim recognizes that Kawa is still protecting the windows, he instructed him to take a seat, telling him that they need to take advantage of any rest they can get. Kawa sits next to Tomahawk, sharing earphones to listen to music while others watch television. Soon after, Kawa hears something from outside, and when he investigates, he draws the attention of others. When Major Jassim looks out the window, he notices Jamil notifying the ISIS car bomber of the group's location. Everyone takes cover as they realize what is going on. The blast, unfortunately, ends up killing Tomahawk, and Major Jassim attacks Kawa. The others come to a halt and assure him that it is not Kawa's fault, and Kawa assures the Major that he is not a traitor. Major Jassim then takes Tomahawk's phone, earphones, and Tomahawk and hands them over to Kawa. They then take Tomahawk's body and place it on the Humvee to pray for it. Another Humvee arrives, and the group huddles as they discuss their strategy for getting to a specific location. The team departs after determining the safest route. They come across kids carrying their dead father's body while driving. Major Jassim offers them a ride, but the eldest child declines. His brother, on the other hand, wishes to accompany them. Following their argument, the younger brother boards the Humvee while his older brother remains behind, carrying his deceased father. The scene shifts to the group arriving at their city's border, where they bribe the federal police guarding the border to allow them to pass. The others then transport Tomahawk's body to a location where fallen citizens are buried, while Major Jassim pays a family member to keep and care for the boy. Returning to the others, Kawa questions Huka on why they need to bribe federal police to enter their own city, but he does not respond. Then, another federal officer notices that they are members of the SWAT team and summons them. Huka intervenes just as Kawa is about to respond. Major Jassim then approaches the military police and threatens him with not telling anybody else that he has seen them. As they leave the city, Kawa checks Tomahawk's phone and finds pictures of him with dead Daesh. Meanwhile, Major Jassim tells the group that before joining SWAT, he was a homicide detective and a teacher. Woli then reveals that he knows because he used to be his teacher. Returning to Kawa, he is frustrated because everyone is making him feel out of place and he knows nothing about their mission. Huka then takes his phone and shows him a video of Tomahawk's brother being killed by Daesh. He tells Kawa that whenever Tomahawk loses sight of its own mission, he makes himself watch the video to remind himself of who they're fighting for. The enemy suddenly begins shooting civilians. The SWAT team fires back. But Huka is shot in the back of the head while reminding citizens to stay out of the minefield. Major Jassim is frustrated and angry because he has lost another son. With this, he leads Walid and Kawa into the building, where they kill the shooters. Following that, Major Jassim and Walid discuss their current radius from that specific location. Meanwhile, Kawa attempts to photograph a fallen Daesh, but it suddenly breathes. He is about to kill him when Major Jassim intervenes and tells him to let the man suffer. 
Other SWAT members arrive shortly after, and they all catch up with the plan. Later, Walid notices something in the distance and informs Major Jassim of it. It is the enemy's base. However, there are only 10 people in the group. Major Jassim tells Walid that it is his decision whether or not they will continue, but Walid points out that Jassim is the leader. The two argue, and Walid makes the decision to continue with the mission. Then they hear a drone flying overhead, and everyone becomes aware. The drone flies straight down their Humvee, exploding. What? A second drone is spotted, but it is destroyed by a man from another building. The people from the other building turn out to be Iranian special forces. Major Jassim approaches the man and proposes a trade of ammo for cigarettes, to which the man agrees. Following that, they met with the Iranian special forces, but only Major Jassim was allowed to enter their building. Inside, he meets with the commander of the special forces, Colonel Isfahani. They briefly discuss their respective groups before proceeding with the barter. Colonel Isfahani wants three cartons of cigarettes in exchange for one box of ammunition, but Major Jassim insists on one box of ammunition in exchange for one carton of cigarettes. Colonel Isfahani agrees, but asks Major Jassim to look at their prisoners and recognize them if he recognizes any of them, and the two reach an agreement. Outside, Kawa is concerned about the Major, but Kamal assures him that he will be fine. They are surprised, however, when Major Jassim calls Kawa and orders him to come inside. Kawa and the rest of the SWAT team enter and are surprised to see Jamil as one of the Special Forces prisoners. Major Jassim informs Colonel Isfahani that they intend to take Jamil because he has betrayed them, but the Colonel refuses. Meanwhile, Jamil tells Kawa that he only did it because Daesh could well find his family in America if he doesn't follow them. As the two leaders argue, the tension rises and everyone prepares to fight when Kawa hacks Jamil's head off with a tomahawk, killing him. After they've recovered from what they've witnessed, the two groups simply continue to barter. Woli then trades their hookah for such an RPG. The scene shifts to the Humvee, where Major Jassim reveals the truth about their group to Kawa. They are unable to obtain ammunition from the base or request backup or artillery strikes because they disobey their orders. They were assigned to a mission one month ago, for which Major Jassim had made all of the plans and preparations. However, a few weeks later, they are transferred under a new command and their first mission is cancelled. They intend to dispatch SWAT to a remote village, far from their own conflict in the city. As a result, they fly under the radar and carry out their first mission. Major Jassim is about to tell Kawa about the mission when he stops him and tells him that he doesn't need to know. He will follow Major Jassim on whatever mission they are on. They eventually reach the end of the road and must continue on foot. Unfortunately, enemies begin shooting them as soon as they exit the Humvee. The others requested an RPG shot, but Walid insists that now is not the time. He then throws a grenade, but it bounces off close to a Humvee, causing Amir, who is using the machine gun, to accidentally shoot Yunus as a result of the explosion's impact. During the fighting, Kawa is injured in the face. Kamal treats his injury and Walid apologizes for causing it. Amir, another member of the team, cries as he apologizes for accidentally killing a teammate, but Major Jassim comforts him. Despite Kawa's injury, they continue moving on foot and soon encounter another group of terrorists, which they have to fight using close combat. They are able to defeat the terrorists, but Razak is killed and Shinan is injured. Without time to mourn their loss, they collect Razak's weapons and ammunition and continue moving. When they arrive at their destination, Walid, Amir, and Kawa locate themselves while the others wait for Walid's signal. He then shoots the RPG at the enemies, but it does not explode. Kawa, Amir, and Walid protect Major Jassim and others from above as they walk into the enemy's base and a shootout occurs between SWAT members and terrorists. The SWAT team defeats the enemies, but Arkham is killed during the battle. They immediately clear the area after entering the enemy's base, and Major Jassim commands them to reload and rehydrate for 90 seconds before such a potential enemy reinforcement arrives. He then walks over to a table where he notices scattered magazines. Because of his neatness, he gathers the magazines and places them in a box. But when he lifts the box, a bomb goes off, and everyone is taken aback by the explosion. Everyone rushes to their commander and is speechless when they see Major Jassim's bloodied dead body. Everyone is mourning the death of the Major when Kawa abruptly stands up and informs them that their 90 seconds are up. 
they must complete the mission and only return to find their fallen comrades. This enrages will lead at others, and they lose motivation to carry on their mission. But Kamal agrees with Kawa and persuades will lead to continue because they are only a few blocks away from their destination. The six surviving Nineveh SWAT persons, now led by Wei Deal, then continue on their way to complete their mission. Wei Deal commands everyone to kill any man they see as they enter a building. However, only those who have silencers will use guns, while those without will use their blades. They see a mother and child as they continue to move into the building and sign them to keep quiet as they proceed upstairs. When he gets to a certain door, Wo Li takes off his shoe and pulls a key from it. He opens the door, trembling, and starts firing the man inside of the apartment. Wo Li enters quickly, and the rest of the group follows. Wo Li bursts into tears upon seeing the woman and child in the living room, as he finally sees his wife and daughter. Kawa realizes what their mission is as he watches the family reunite. Kamal then calls to check on his wound and asks if he now understands their mission, which he confirms. Kawa asks if this will be done for all SWAT members, and Kamal replies that it will only be done for those whose families are still alive. Then he tells Kawa that Amir's wife is no longer alive, but they have information about his son's whereabouts. When Kawa questions why they are doing this, Kamal tells her that it is all Major Jassim's fault. It turns out that his family was murdered by Daesh's commander, whom he had imprisoned long before joining the terrorist organization. In addition, Major Jassim believed that saving more children was critical to rebuilding lives in the city. Returning to Walid and his family, he informs them to pack their belongings because they are about to leave. When he removes his vest, his wife asks if he will not accompany them, to which he responds that he will always accompany them. The film concludes with Kawa standing up and reapplying his mask as he asks Amir how far his son's location is from theirs. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to help the channel grow.